lecturer in Arctic uh, geopolitics at the HEC Business School in Paris. Welcome to the program. The world has been watching the elections in Greenland very closely. Tell us how significant is this win by Greenland's main opposition party and the news that we've heard in the last hour that the leader uh, of the party uh, says that this rare earth mining project will be discontinued. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, definitely, this is very, very significant in Greenland, but also in the Arctic and even in the world. Uh, basically, the message that the Greenlanders are sending to the rest of the world is twofold. The first message is we don't want dirty mining. We're not ready to sacrifice our environment to reach independence. That's basically the first message. And then the second message is also there are alternatives uh, new industries uh, that could be developed here in Greenland and elsewhere in the world uh, instead of dirty mining. And by dirty mining in Greenland right now, what we're talking about is primarily uh, rare earth and uranium mining. So this is very significant and definitely it will spill over uh, in many of the other Arctic countries. And remind us why um, this mine has been so controversial. Because it's about uranium, first of all. And uranium is, of course, very polluting when you exploit it. And the other reason is that this mine is in the southern tip of the island, of the country. And this is an area where people are have been wondering for the past 10 years, what kind of development do we want? Do we want dirty mining, in the case here, uh, uranium and rare earth? Or do we want other kinds of industries, such as renewable hydrogen, such as agriculture, such as tourism. And in this southern part of the country, people of all ages and all backgrounds uh, think that it's better to think about alternatives rather than uh, good old mining. And what about uh, the international interest uh, in that mine? Talk to us about that. Well, this is a mine that was firstly developed by an Australian company from the other side of the world. Uh, and then it was funded, backed by Chinese companies. Uh, so the, uh, the this mine is a global project, and this is definitely a feat of how the Arctic is globalizing, definitely. And in Greenland, this has attracted, of course, a lot of uh, scrutiny because simply uh, having China, Chinese companies investing large amounts of money in such a strategic project because this particular project, the Quanware Suite uh, project, could have been the second largest rare earth mine outside of China uh, in the world, then basically uh, this has attracted a lot of interest from the US, from Europe, from Denmark, of course, uh, not only from a business point of view, but also from a geopolitical okay. and geostrategic point of view. They don't want China to get a foothold in this part of the world. Thank you so much for putting uh, Greenland into that global perspective for us. Thank you so much, Mika Merid, uh, joining us from HEC Business School in Paris.